Hi guys, welcome to War Wiki. Timeless Thursday is our series where we introduce you to some lesser known historic wars or an event. Today we bring you a war fought in 80s, that changed the way naval battles are fought. This war not only showed the iron resolve of the British, but also showed the world, the power and impact that an aircraft carrier can have in any naval assault. Today we introduce you to a full-fledged war that not many outside Britain and Argentina knows about. Today we discuss about the Falkland War. The relations between United Kingdom and Argentina has always been problematic. The bone of contention has been a small archipelago some 300 miles of the coast of Argentina, called Falkland Islands. The islands have been a rich source of natural resources, fish, and oil. While there has been different sides to the story, as to why is there animosity between the two. The core lies in the story of the island's discovery. In 1690 a British sailor named John Strong was the first person to discover these islands. Later these islands changed hands several times, occasionally after hard-fought battles. While the French and Spanish had also had control over these islands, they eventually left, and the British never denounced their claim to the island that they had once discovered and lost. Argentina was nowhere in the equation back then as it only came to existence after their independence from Spain in 1810. In 1820 an American sailor landed on the islands and declared them for the Argentine government. In 1833, British reclaimed the island and since then have held the island. Argentine troops didn't had a chance to oppose or even resist the mighty British Empire back then, they had to give up the island easily. But from that day Falklands had become an important national pride and patriotism symbol for the Argentine public. Since early 19th century, there has always been ongoing negotiations on the Falkland Island and its waters between the two countries. Just before the conflict the economic conditions of both Argentina and UK were not very good. The problems in Argentina were acute. It was crippled with devastating economic stagnation, and a major civil unrest against the military junta. In December 1981 the military regime changed, bringing to office a new junta head and acting president, General Leopoldo Galtieri. Looking at the public sentiment, General Galtieri played to a hunch and thought of a way to garner support. He wanted to pacify the Argentine public by mobilizing their long-standing patriotic feelings towards the islands. On April 2, 1982 Argentine troops invaded and overcame a small British garrison in Falkland capital of Port Stanley. The Falklands had fallen from the hands of the British. There was a widespread joy, a sense of pride and patriotism in Argentina, General Galtieri move seemed to have worked perfectly, it seemed that, not only would he have public backing, Argentina would be able to use the resources of the island, and considering the current UK economic situation, in all likelihood UK would not retaliate. Well he was wrong. The then British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, along with her Conservative Party decided that no matter how small, how far, but Falklands was a sovereign part of United Kingdom and it needs to be regained. Within weeks the British mounted an assault to retake the Falkland Islands. The British sent a naval task force comprising of around 15,000 troops, which included elite troops conducive to the cold weather, the Gurkhas. Special forces like the British Air Service and Special Boat Service were also involved. Both the countries had declared war on each other, while the British forces had to travel more than 8,000 miles, Argentine forces were fighting right at their doorsteps. For this simple reason the odds were tilted in favor of Argentina. British got the backing of European Union and NATO, while Argentina had support from all Latin American countries except Chile. Chile and Argentina were already fighting a battle over the islands in Beagle Channel. As a matter of fact this had implication on the Falkland War with British. Argentina knew that the threat of Chile on the Argentina mainland was more serious than the British assault on Falkland Islands. Keeping this in mind General Galtieri had only stationed some ragtag marine forces, with around 10,000 new conscripts on the Falklands to resist the British whereas major portion of Argentine forces were stationed in mainland Argentina. The British naval forces made a temporary base in Ascension Islands in Pacific Ocean, which was still thousands of miles away from the Falklands. The task force was put together in a hurry, with whatever vessels were available. It included two aircraft carriers, HMS Invincible, and HMS Hermes, carrying the Harrier jets. Along with several important escort vessels, destroyers, and frigates, a nuclear submarine HMS Conqueror was also the part of the force. In all there were 127 vessels. The NATO and USA did not expect this expedition to be successful, for reasons the naval force had to operate more than 8,000 miles away from home, with extremely poor logistic support and very poor weather conditions. The worst part was there were only two airstrips in British control, which were in the two British aircraft carriers, 
against the entire Argentina coastal support, an airstrip in Port Stanley which too was under the control of Argentine forces. To make matters worse, British just had 42 multipurpose Harrier jets, up against 128 serviceable jets of Argentina, 50 of which were air superiority fighters. In addition to this the Argentine too had one aircraft carrier, the 25 de Mayo, which too would be a threat to British forces. On April 25th, a small team of British Royal Marine troops along with the SAS and SBS retook the South Georgia Islands, which barely had any Argentine forces stationed. The next week which followed witnessed a naval war in Falkland waters. One of the prominent Argentine submarine, ARA Santa Fe was badly damaged by the British vessels, the Argentine Navy had to abandon the vessel. On May 2, HMS Conqueror, the British nuclear submarine sank the Argentine cruiser General Belgrano, although there is controversy surrounding this incident, this was a single most powerful event that changed this war. The vessel was engaged and fired upon, what Argentine consider out of the war zone. More than 300 sailors and soldiers were killed, around 600 were rescued. After this incident, the Argentine military junta docked all the important vessels, the ARA 25 de Mayo, along with all its escorting entourage including several destroyers were all docked, never to be used in this war. Just two days later British faced their first major setback, the Argentine naval aircraft struck an Exocet missile on a British Type 42 destroyer, sinking the HMS Sheffield. The French Exocet missiles were deadly and British knew about them. Something had to be done about the missiles, the British special forces in an secret operation were to be dropped few miles offshore, head to the mainland on inflatable rubber boats and destroy the Argentina's remaining Exocet missiles. The bad weather forced the SAS team to land 50 miles away from the target, as a result the operation was called off. There were several other naval losses on both sides, while Argentina lost several cargo vessels and patrol boats, the British lost two frigates and one additional destroyer. Few vessels were severely damaged, and a British cargo ship was sunk. This ship was carrying 24 light transport helicopters for land operations. Along with the naval operations, there were several aerial skirmishes and bombardments too. The Argentine fleet comprised of, A4 Skyhawks, IAI Daggers, English Electric Canberras, and Mirage 3 Escorts. Weeks that followed saw many battles involving these aircrafts with the British Harrier jets. During the war, Argentina aerial losses were massive, they lost 25 helicopters and around 70 planes. British lost around 10 Harrier jets and one bomber plane. On May 21 the British began their land assault on the Falklands. Barring few pockets of resistance, the Argentine ground forces commander General Mario Menendez, centralized his forces around the capital of Port Stanley. The British Navy Task Force Commander Rear Admiral John Woodward, and the Land Force Commander Major General Jeremy Moore, decided to make their initial landing near Port San Carlos, on the northern coast of East Falkland, and then move southwards through land. The British landing on San Carlos was virtually unopposed. Without the transport helicopters, which were sunk by the Argentines, the British forces had to cover massive grounds in a very hostile cold weather, in an open field battleground. Several prominent land battles were fought to capture settlements in Darwin and Goose Green. After a very intense battle the British were able to capture high ground on west of Port Stanley. The approach road from the west was taken and the capital city of Port Stanley was cut off. Constant British bombardments was enough to break the morale of second grade Argentine conscripts. On June 14 the Argentine commanding officer General Menendez surrendered, thereby ending the conflict. In next few days the small islands of South Sandwich were also retaken. British had taken some 11,500 Argentine prisoners of war. In this three-month-long war, close to 250 British soldiers and three British citizens in Falklands lost their lives. Argentina lost around 650 of their soldiers. The material losses for both the countries were massive. The British cost of war was a massive $1.2 billion. Argentina lost almost half of its air force. Argentina's military government was severely discredited by its failure, the junta was overthrown and civilian rule was established by 1983. Meanwhile, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher converted widespread patriotic support into a landslide victory for her Conservative Party in the parliamentary election of 1983. While the role of the nuclear submarine HMS Conqueror cannot be downplayed, I think it was the flexibility provided by the two aircraft carriers that changed this war completely. British did not have any landing strip or air support possibility, apart from the two aircraft carriers. 
and it is because of this superior air support that they could win this war against severely unfavorable odds. It was after this war and the Gulf War, that aircraft carriers became the centerpiece of every Blue Water Navy. We would like to know your view. What do you think, are aircraft carriers the most important factor in any Navy? Do comment and tell us your views. We will continue to bring such historic war stories, a great way to support us is to subscribe our channel. Do like and comment about this video. Have a great day and support WarWiki.